Questions of Doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but as you'll also see at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is not only useful to the person who has asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. Now today's question of doom um, is one which uh, I received a couple of weeks ago, but I've been holding on to uh, until such a time that an appropriate answer could be formed and recorded for you. Uh, all will become clear in a moment, but it goes like this. Dear Mr. Soup, my name is Shona. I live in County Antrim, Northern Ireland. Ah, Mrs. Soup is from County Antrim. It's a good place to be from. And I have a question about tattoos. Hmm. I'm thinking of getting a so-called tribal tattoo this summer to celebrate passing my exams, but I don't know where to start. Having watched your channel for a while now, I get the inkling that there is a danger of insulting certain groups if I get a tattoo which is culturally accurate, but also inappropriate for someone outside of the tribe, or I suppose outside of a certain um, uh, cultural or, uh, or um, uh, social sort of strata within that tribe. So uh, yeah, very good thinking. That said, I don't want to just get a meaningless series of cool markings for the sake of it, or worse still, have an insult tattooed on my back and not know it. <laughs> what are your thoughts on tattoos? Is it better to get a real or fake tribal tattoo? Is there a way to get one and be certain of its meaning um, and not insult anyone in the process? Thanks for all your videos, Shona O'Brien. Or O'Brien. Um, well, Shona, I have to say, actually, unfortunately, I'm not exactly the best person to ask about tattoos. I haven't got a tattoo myself, and the re main reason for that is because I have a crippling fear of needles. I absolutely, uh, I'm absolutely terrified of them. <laughs> that said, though, uh, Mrs. Soup, for example, she's got a, um, a tattoo, um, uh, quite a nice one, actually. I won't say what or where, but, um, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not adverse to tattoos. It's just a matter of, um, yeah... Oh. Anyway, thankfully, um, I happen to know just the man to answer this question. Our very own Reese Booth uh, down in Australia. He he has a tattoo. He has a sort of a, a cool uh, modern take on like a tribal kind of image. Uh, and I imagine he'll have lots to say and share on this topic. So I will now hand over to the masterful uh, Mr. Reese Booth. So uh, here we go. Good afternoon, Archaeosupians. Great to be back. Thank you for your question, Shona, and masterful, Mr. Soup. I, I could get used to that one. Anyway, moving on. Where have I been for the last month? Well, my computer was getting upgraded because, well, Windows 7 failed on me, so I had to upgrade and get Windows 8, which I'm still getting to grips with. I find it quite, well, to be honest, crap, uh, but I'm still getting used to it, so bear with me. I had to get a new web camera because my older one, which was only six months old at the time, died on me, and that was a pain in the butt. So now I've got an upgraded camera. Oh, and there's a little aside here. I've moved back in with my family, so if you do hear other voices in the background, I do apologise, but I have set up in the living room because, well, I can't set up in my bedroom for a few different reasons, but for the most of it, it really shouldn't be a bother. I've timed my filming schedule to try and uh, be later at night or earlier in the morning, only because my mother actually runs a daycare centre um, downstairs. So any noises, once again, I do apologise. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about as well is the personal meaning to my tattoos to get us kicked off on the this week's uh, topic. My two tattoos represent uh, both my mother and my father's uh, side of the family in the sense that I wanted to represent uh, both sides with myths of where they had come from. So my father is from Wolverhampton in Britain 
and my mother is was born in Macau uh, in China. Now, the myth that I used for my father was Arthur, King Arthur, Arthurian myth. So I got a tribal tattoo that represented uh, King Arthur's shield, spear and sword, so Excalibur, Ron and all that. I then got a tattoo on my chest uh, there, um, which represents the white dragon, uh, which is one of the four dragons of Chinese mythology, which represents uh, Macau, uh, represents that area. There's a longer story to that, but uh, I won't bore you with it. But then, okay, you, you'll be sitting there and asking yourself, well, why didn't you just get, you know, a, a sword, a shield, and a spear, and a white dragon? Well, the reason for that was I wanted to also represent my love for other cultures, for learning about other cultures that I didn't know about. And cultures that use tribal, use tribal uh, symbols and patterns, I knew very little about until... I got my tattoo. So what I decided to do is I would get something different, something that I didn't know much about, that didn't really represent my culture per se, but the culture of others. I should also explain why I was interested in myth as well, because that has a big part to do with uh, the tattoos. Now, the reason why I focused on myth is because mythology uh, leads to, in my opinion, archaeology to an extent. If we didn't have mythology, we wouldn't really have archaeology in its modern form. Anyway, I'm feeling good. Let's get into it. So, Shona, you want to know about tattoos? Well, first of all, my experience with tattoos is that even though people say it's extremely painful, I think that's really dependent on one, pain tolerance, and two, where you're going to get your tattoo. So, just getting that one out of the way quickly. The experience that I could say that it felt to me it's like if somebody was to get a, um, a shell from a beach and then just scrape it on your arm repeatedly. Um, it does hurt maybe after a little while, but outside of that, uh, I didn't find it too uncomfortable until we got to sensitive areas on my chest. Anyway, so we want to talk about things like um, is getting a tribal tattoo insulting? Well, it can be, but for the majority, I'd say no. And I'll explain what I mean by that. If you were to get a Maori tattoo um, or tamoka done uh, by a traditional Maori tattooist and you weren't Maori, then that would be considered uh, by Maori people as insulting and, among other things, it would also be considered, um, well, incorrect. You're, you're not Maori. Uh, by distance, so you shouldn't really have a traditional Maori tattoo. It goes for the same thing in Polynesia. Now, Maori tattoos are known as Tomoka, and Tomoka, and I'm sorry for the pronunciation here, Tomoka is a form of tattooing which is slightly different to what we're traditionally used to as Westerners. Now, that's not to say that Tamoka hasn't developed into these present times in the sense that traditional Tamoka was done with a bone, um, and this is an example of a uh, Tamoka uh, needle, which is made from an albatross bone. But um, the thing that we have to understand is Tamoka is Tamoka is very different to what we understand um, in, in tattooing, and I'll explain this via what the Tupapa Museum in New Zealand has said. Tattoo is the English version of the Tahitian word tatua. Tattoo is the traditional, the tradition of marking the skin with ink and needles, whereas moka is the practice of scarring and marking the skin to reflect wakapapa, which, sorry again for the pronunciation, means genealogy of the Maori wearer. So it's sort of like a uh, tool to um, define one's genealogy. Uh, mocha can be seen as a cultural affirmation. So in saying that, a cultural affirmation, we then begin to understand that why it may not be appropriate for somebody who is not uh, considered to be a part of that culture to have a mocha. Anyway, 
moving along, um, I also want to talk about a couple of these other body uh, augmentations, Tamaka being the main one still, but we want to also consider things such as piercings, uh, which have been around for as long as 11 to 12,000 years, uh, confirmed. Anyway, continuing on from there, we also want to talk about, and this isn't necessarily considered a body augmentation, but painting. Now, I wanted to bring up painting because this fits in probably closer to your part of the world, Shauna, in the sense that the Pix or the Picti, whose name translates into the Latin as the painted or the painted people, uh, come from your general part of the world. So we get our information from Tacitus, who wrote about the Picts about 20, 30 years after the first contact with the Picts. And they weren't called Picts then, they, they had a different name, but I couldn't for the life of me find out what the uh, traditional tribal name of those people were. I think there was more than one. Anyway, continuing on, we assume that the Picts were painted from the writings of Tacitus, but as a lot of people who know who Tacitus is, a Roman historian, he can exaggerate things and look uh, at other cultures through a very Roman-centric point of view. So what we have to understand is that perhaps if the Picts did actually paint themselves, maybe they only painted themselves for ceremonies or maybe it was only painted for times of conflict which obviously with the Romans there was a lot of conflict but what we also need to understand is that there is cultural significance behind these paintings and that there is probably some religious or ceremonial significance behind the painting however once again there is no actual confirmed uh, evidence to say that these people walked around with paintings on themselves other than Tacitus. But at an educated guess, what we find in the area where the Picts were living, there's rock art and quite a few different forms of pictographs of animals and patterns. So these animals and patterns can be loosely translated into as far as an archaeologist could see, as ritual, there's that word again, and this ritual could possibly be linked in, in a way, a cross-cultural um, way, with uh, the Native American animal totems. Now, I'm not saying that they knew each other or anything like that, I'm just saying the equivalent could have been seen like the, like the Native American totems. So, my suggestion to you, Shauna, is perhaps take a look into that sort of realm where these pictures, and I'm not sure about anyone who's done a definitive guide, but uh, all these pictures um, on the rock art, the symbols would have meanings behind them. Now, I do know with going back to Tomoka and the Maori that it's not only um, the symbols that are representative of places, certain uh, concepts, but where you get the tattoo is also extremely important. So if I was to have a tattoo on the left side of my face, that would represent my father's side of the family. If I was to get it on the right side of my face, that would represent my mother's side of the family. Now, there is also a big difference in Tamuka uh, between genders. Now, I wanted to put some pictures up of traditional Tamoka, but I thought a bit better of it seeming that um, any pictures I would uh, get my hands on would be of deceased Maori, and I don't really uh, know too many Maori people that would be impressed about me putting pictures up like that. But if you want to look at that, just go to the Tupapa Museum, when they obviously have permission from the local Maori people to display these photos and you will see what I'm talking about, what Tomoka actually is. Now, one of the major differences again between Tomoka and traditional tattooing is that Tomoka uses the the bone needle as a chisel rather than inserting and taking out like a needle uh, in today's tattooing. It doesn't just inject the ink, it in fact um, creates a scar. I've already got one there at the moment. Um, it creates a scar where basically it stays, it stays with you, the scar, and the ink then runs in the scar, as it were, and it, it leaves 
the pattern and the ink in the skin. And a lot of you might be wondering, well, you know, that, that could lead to infection. And it probably did on occasion, but Maori in this example got around infection by using caterpillars. And these caterpillars would stop the infection. Now, I'm not 100% sure how that happened. I'm sure that it was they basically left caterpillars on the skin which would eat maybe the dead skin and stave off infection. I'm not 100% on that one. Maybe they crushed up the caterpillars and wiped it on after um, doing the tattooing. But the point of it is is that they found a way around it. And this is something that we can see uh, in all cultures around the world, just going into that cultural relativism there. Anyway, moving on again, gender is, uh, is a very important thing when it concerns uh, Tomoka because uh, Maori women uh, would only have their Tomoka on the chin, the lips, the nostrils, I think perhaps on the forehead a little bit. And then the males would have it both sides of the face and covering the whole thing. And there is a huge difference um, in the way this went about. For example, the women, um, from what I've read, uh, would get all their tattooing done within the, within the one session. Whereas the males, um, and this is considered to be a an age thing, an age ceremony in a way where you would get part of your tattoo done when you started growing up and then another part of the tattoo done when you got to a certain age again or if you did, I assume, a certain ceremony and things like that. I'm not an expert when this was uh, done, and I don't know much, as much as I'd like to about Maori ceremonies, but if anyone wants to educate me on that, send me a link, send me a reference. And basically, these tattoos would be done over the years for males. Now, the males didn't just have tattoos on their faces. They also had them on the shoulders, uh, forearms, and traditionally on the backside, on, on your butt. And these tattoos would go all the way down to the, uh, down your thighs. Probably wouldn't surpass your knee. It'd probably be just a bit above the knee on the back of the, on the back of the, your thighs. And what would happen there from the Australian Museum here, aesthetically, the bottom is a very sensual area to look at. Traditionally, it links the back design to the designs on the back of the legs. The spirals, accentuate the roundness of the buttocks and, and it helps enhance the body. So that's a really, really interesting one. And just another one, um, going back to the face now, why is mocha applied to the face? A mocha on the face is the ultimate statement of one's identity as Maori. The head is believed to be the most sacred part of the body to where the mocha on the face is to bear an undeniable declaration of who you are. So in that sense, I can understand why Maori would find it offensive if, is, if you got a, a Maori tribal tattoo. But if you're talking like a tribal tattoo like mine, which is very different um, to that, then you would probably, you won't have a problem. However, what I find interesting as well is that my design, when I did, when I done my design, what you may see, and this is quite embarrassing, but these spirals here, they actually have a meaning in Maori, uh, which means new beginnings. Um, and I was talking to a Maori friend of mine who told me uh, about that. But the thing is, is that um, obviously the intention wasn't to put that in there, but I find that quite funny how certain patterns like that can transcend cultures and have different meanings. And I assume that that happens more than, you know, just for me. It may happen on other people who get um, these kind of tattoos that you'll, you'll find that your tattoo may have meanings in other cultures that you didn't expect. So what does mocha mean today? If the process is followed properly, Mocha continues to mean what it always has meant. It is a symbol of integrity, Maori identity and prestige, as well as a reflection of wakapapa and history. Are there any restrictions on a mocha wearer? This is up to the wearer. Some people opt to make lifestyle changes as part of the process of obtaining a mocha, respecting their mocha by choosing to do or not to do certain things which I find is a very strong cultural thing to do to actually give something up or to 
start doing something um, different in your life. So that's all I've got on Tomoka today. I am a little bit flustered actually uh, by d um, doing this uh, video primarily because I did have a couple of days to research but I didn't expect to be back up and running uh, so soon. Anyway, thank you very much for the question, Shona. I hope that clears up a little bit and um, please keep us informed of what you decide to do eventually. Uh, like I said, maybe it would be good to take a look at a Pictish uh, rock art form um, which may relay back to you in some way, an animal totem or something of the like. Anyway, I hope everyone found that interesting and I hope all my information was correct. Like I said, it's been, it was a quick um, process to getting all this information together, but I did get my information from the Australian National Museum and the uh, Tupapa Museum in New Zealand. And I would just like to thank all of you for, um, as Mr. Soup was telling me, uh, you guys were asking where I was and things like that. So thank you for that. And uh, a quick shout out to uh, Mr. McNutt, uh, avid um, watcher of Archeo Soup. I hope you get better soon, mate, and uh, we will be talking soon. Thanks, everyone, and goodbye.